not afraid to tell it like it is. The Scott Thompson Show, weekdays from noon till 3 on AM 900 CHML. I introduce you to a friend of mine, an old school friend of mine, uh, I guess it was a year or two ago now, uh, Doug Gardham. And the reason uh, I wanted to bring Doug on is because uh, so many of us in life uh, change what we're doing. We change directions. We get to a crossroad in life. We decide to turn left instead of right or right instead of left or just blow the intersection, stop sign, and go straight through it. Uh, Doug is kind of one of those guys. Uh, I've known Doug since probably junior high-ish, grade 7, grade 8, uh, always uh, involved in sports and athletics, very bright guy, uh, went on to become uh, an engineer and, and did that for, I, I believe, 25 years or so, and then decided he had had enough and wanted to become an author. Because if you're an engineer, let's be honest, it's boring, you have way too much money, probably way too much job security, so why not be an author? Uh, Doug Gardham is with us now. Reason being, he's on book number two. Good afternoon, Doug. How you doing today? Scott, I'm uh, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> sound a little he- introduction. You sound a little hesitant now, Doug. You sure you want to keep going with this? Oh, there's nothing going to stop this now, Scott. All right, uh, it's, uh, it's going. So, did I give a good analogy of your history and, and how you got into this? How long were you an engineer? Well, I, when I got to the end of high school, that's where I headed to, to engineering school. So 25 years is pretty close to exactly what it is, give or take one or two years. So, no, it was uh, that's what I was doing. The one thing that I never stopped doing, though, was writing. I, I, I wrote in high school, uh, wrote a lot of the music in the band that I uh, played in, and that's where I found my love for, for words and stuff. So I have always been writing, and people would call that probably a hobby. I was a little more serious about it. But it finally kind of happened when you got published and things just kind of changed quite dramatically very quickly. You've always had or always needed a creative outlook, correct? Like whether it was playing in a band with some friends that we have or what have you uh, as, as a younger person and now writing. You've always needed that sort of creative outlet, haven't you? It, it never went away, Scott. It just uh, it was always there. And whenever I had a spare moment... I did find myself sitting down and writing, and it just, that's how it was. And I got to a point where I just literally wrote every day. It kind of got into short stories, it got into prose and poetry, and then it came into, like, literally novels. And uh, I, kept, I kept really chasing it. And what really changed for me was the fact that I had done this almost my whole life. The kids and the family, everybody knew what Dad's dream was, and I didn't have a keepsake for them, and that's what actually changed this, was for me to go and get a nice packaged, uh, like a book, that someone could pick up and read rather than eight and a half by 11 inch scraps of paper. <laughs> Something they could pass on to the next generation. For sure. Did you, uh, did you ever have the same love for engineering as you did writing? Did well, you ever have that passion? I was going to say there was a passion there in the fact that I was good at math and science, and, and that always makes you feel good, and it's pleasing to others. It's, a, it's one of those things where if you, you make other people happy. And Your parents, you mean? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's one of those things that just makes things easier. You're not there kind of in conflict trying to prove that you want to do something else. So for me, it was, it was an, an ideal kind of situation. And, uh, but the neat part of it was the fact that, I mean, I, it's not like uh, I had to travel anywhere to actually write. I could just write wherever I was. So it was kind of a nice thing to have for me to, as, a, as a background. It just never went away. Did you have, ever have problems balancing the two? The biggest problem I had was really right at the end. Um, when I finished the actor, I, I knew I had something special when I kind of got to the end. I had been through enormous. I mean, the actor took 15 years. So I'd rewritten it and done everything. And by the final, we took it from 800 pa- I took it from 800 pages to 400 pages, and I knew I, I, I felt I had something special. And the biggest deal I had was, what am I going to do because I can't keep this double life up, and I can't let this baby go. Mm-hmm. All right, so what happened in your life at that point? Well, literally, we were taking my daughter out west to go to school, and I said, I've got to do something. I was lucky to find a publisher in iUniverse, um, and uh, the rest is I got with some professional editors, and literally we took a story I'd written following seeing the Titanic movie in 99, 
so that's a long time, mm-hmm. and uh, literally put uh, I, I, the, the the story literally I'll say transformed not only itself as I wrote it and become what it what it what it is today. It it really transformed my life too. So I it, it's just it's an amazing kind of deal to have a chance to do this. <laughs> So you were at a crossroads with your other career and then decided to break free. We talked about this last time uh, I interviewed you. Just very briefly, what's that like, cutting that cord? Well, for me, it was... Or even having it cut for you. Well, I I, I laugh a little bit because so much of my life has been predictable and planned. That's the engineering world. And you want that. You don't want your wheel falling off your car or plane falling into the air. This new life is completely on the other side. I think you describe it as taking a 180. It's, it's uh, serendipity, it's happenstance, it's synchronicity. There's just so many other things you become open to. And that was what really, I'll say, is the most challenging thing for me to deal with, is, is, is it's there. And when I think you love what you're doing, it, it, it's a lot of work, but it doesn't quite feel like work. And so for me, what was actually happening, I didn't know it. But what was actually happening was um, my story was kind of coming to an end, pardon the pun there, but coming to an end with where I was working. Yeah. And literally the week that the book was released online at Amazon and Barnes and & Nobles and Chapters, where I was working was talking about reorganizing and wanted to put me in a new division. Yeah. And I, I, was getting my, I was getting my answer. Yeah. Now, previously, I would have just gone and done that. Yeah. But now I had, and no one actually knew about it. <laughs> so that was another bit of a surprise. This is one wasn't one where, okay, now you're going to leave this and, yeah. and move into this. I had been working at this for a very long time, so it wasn't that part wasn't new at all. So it was the shock to everyone else. Yeah, and it still, I think, still is. It's yeah. a difficult thing when you move from being the the guy in that square hole, so to speak. And you become a round peg. It's it's everyone knows you as a, as the engineer, so to speak. Yeah. So, like, what kind of writer can you be? <laughs> so uh, here you are, you, the actors behind you. What do you learn from the first one as you go forward with the new one? Well, I have. There's so much more in place, Scott. Now, like when I first uh, started, there was nothing. I didn't have anything. I just I, I'm I'm up to almost 60 book signings and chapter stores across Canada. I'm social media. Twitter has exploded on me. I was in Hollywood in September pitching, believe it or not, the actor for a movie. Really? Um, so, and What's it, that it, experience like? Well, you, I keep often saying to people, it's kind of an unbelievable thing, but it, I mean, all this stuff you've always dreamed about, and when it's actually happening, it's, it's just stunning. You just don't want to be anywhere else. What's particularly cool or sweet for me at this point in time is um, last weekend, Julianne Moore won for a movie called Still Alice, yeah. and it was originally a book written by Lisa Genova, and originally published by the same publisher that I'm with, uh, Universe. The actor actually won and has been recognized for the same award from my universe as still Alice received eight years ago. Ooh. So for me, that's just <laughs> been an unbelievable kind of honor. And when I was in Hollywood, that was a big talk, was it takes a long time for all of this stuff to happen. It was almost eight years for that to become a movie. But it just, it, it just, it's, you're talking about it, and it's no longer just a story. It's kind of your life, right? You're living it, yeah. And that, to me, is uh, has just been such a thrill. And, uh, like, for example, I mean, this week I'm actually at Chapters Oakville. I've been doing these every weekend. I wasn't actually going to do book signing, Scott. I think the last time we talked, I had kind of decided yeah. that I wasn't. I was in Indigo Bay Bloor. This is kind of another happenstance thing. Not long after you and I had talked, I met a book manager down there. I was actually down to see the International Track and Field event there. Mm-hmm. And I just happened in because I was trying to figure out how to get the actor in chapter stores. And I met a guy, and he just said, um, where else are you going to go and spend a few hours and talk to people about your book and, and maybe sell a few copies? And I couldn't answer that question. Yeah. And every, literally everything changed. I, I owe him a lot today because of that, that, because of that happening. So... Since then, I mean, Chapters has taken actually taken both books in store across Canada, yeah. which is incredible. So, right. obviously, getting out and selling the wares is where it's at. It's just like touring if you had an album. I was going to say, I could go back to the days when that's what the bands did, right? They went out and they toured to chase an album. And to me, it's I'm getting to kind of live that as, a, as an afterlife in a way. <laughs> 
but I just I can't believe it's it, what what the the signings are like. I meet so many interesting people with so many different things that they're doing, and it's just it's it's just something that I I never anticipated would actually happen. So Why did you not think about doing this initially? Just because you're thinking, well, how many books can I sell going from store to store to store? No, it was had actually nothing to do but with that at all. It was it was probably my introversion and the fact that like. I kind of go in a bookstore to go and hide away in the shelves and right. get lost in a book. And I thought that most people were like that. And I'm actually finding, yeah, there's people that are like that, but there's a huge number of people that do quite enjoy finding out how a book got created and how a writer goes about doing what he does and, and what the stories are all about. It's it's a fabulous opportunity now, and I just I can't believe that I... I was able to actually see the light before it went dark. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, because this is your baby, something that you know, something that you've nurtured, it makes it easier to speak about with people? Oh, it's just, it's such a difference, Scott. I mean, I used to do quite a bit of this where I worked, and you're always wanting to make sure you had the right things together. When this comes out of your heart, it's just a, a whole different picture. And I, I, I just couldn't be happier with the actor and now with the drive-in, because for me, all the pieces came together, and it was what I wanted to actually create. In fact, it's probably better than I thought it was going to be. So now, it's it, for me, it's just a it's a wonderful thing to be able to get a chance to do in your life. I mean, it, it's great. <laughs> uh, how much time between the actor and the drive-in? Well, the drive-in is kind of an interest. It's a collection of short stories, Scott, that I've written over the years, and it kind of came about by accident because I wanted to really released a couple of short stories to help me promote the actor. And the publisher, my publisher, iUniverse, suggested I make a collection. I wasn't too excited about that for some reason or other, but then I thought back to years ago when I used to drive to work, and I would pass certain houses and landmarks that I would see literally hundreds if not thousands of times during my commutes over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I thought what a neat kind of a way of being able to put your put a short story together is the short story being the story behind those places or those houses. Mm. So that's what actually the, the drive-in's about. There's a, the, the, the kind of narrator, the story of the man driving to work. As a reader, you get to find out through these short stories what happens. And he also has a story of his own, which makes this particular drive-in unlike any other for him. So are, ooh, there's the tease. So are all of these short stories related? No. The, the part that I thought was really kind of cool, that's why I like the, the way of presenting them this way, is they've been written over the last 20 years. I went back and picked out what I thought were my best. And the interesting part is there are some similarities between them that I wasn't really aware of. Mm. But what really took my 2014 was the story behind the man, because it came, became, I'll say, somewhat cathartic for me, as you were talking about earlier on, bridging the transition from my engineering world to this full-time writing world. And when I first started writing, I thought it was going to be the simple part of it. It actually turned out to be much, much more challenging than I thought. And when I first started doing it, it became very business and very business jargonish. And I really wanted it to be the feelings and emotions that we go through. When you're in your car you're driving to work in the morning, that's your own space. You mm -hmm. get to think about your career and your life and all the things that are right and wrong and everything else. And that's what I wanted to come across. So it took up most of my 2014 of writing, and, and it still was able to keep it as, a, as I'll say, a, a short work. Uh, what can you take from your previous field that helps you doing what you're doing now? It's stunning, Scott, um, for me. Uh, literally everything for how you plan what you're doing. Um, it gives you the structure. It, it gives you the structure. I mean, when I think... I don't know how I could have done this at 22 because I just you, you don't have the confidence, but you just don't yeah. know the wherewithal, the follow up that goes on, going out and finding new ways to do things or finding. I'm not from the publishing industry, so for me it's like game on. Like I like it's kind of hard not to ask any stupid questions. Like I just get to yeah. do a lot you of. Yeah, you get that. an excuse. It's an excuse to ask as many stupid questions as you want. Really, it, it absolutely is. And like for me, social media. When we last talked, I don't actually think I had a Facebook account. Right. And like now, Twitter has literally taken off on me. It's just exploded. I can't. I can't believe what what what's available there and where it can go. So I mean, all of those things are really great. I'll say, um, to kind of triggers to help a person doing what I'm doing today in this kind of a, an environment. What does your family What does your family think about about all this now? Because you know, you got two, so clearly you're serious. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, 
I, I've, I've had some things from family members that have been nothing short of remarkable. And we talked earlier on about not being too excited about, shall we say, doing music when you're in your teens. Today I, I have uh, unbelievable support. Like, like, they, like it's like chase your dream. You're, you're doing this, and you've got to chase what you're passionate about, and you're, it's remarkable you get a chance to still do it. <laughs> All right, so the drive-in is out, and uh, you're going to be at Chapters in Oakville and Burlington, too, I believe? Yeah, I'm in Burlington in April. I'm at uh, Oak, in, in Oakville uh, this weekend. The books, both the drive-in and, and the, the actor, are available online at all re- online retailers and now available literally across Canada in Chapters Indigo, which I'm really pleased about. Way to go, Doug. <laughs> You know, I'm just sitting here thinking about what a loser life I have. <laughs> well, man, you, can, you got to chase your dream, too, man. You're on the, yeah. you're on the radio. That's a wonderful thing, uh, Good for you, though, man. This is so exciting to see. Uh, anything else you want to plug? What's, what's that? Anything else you want to plug? No, I was going to say, I, I'm really active on the actor. We're just I mean, we're pounding that out. You can get me on Twitter if you want to follow me on Twitter or on Facebook. I'm just Douglas Gardham. And uh, go out, and I'd love to see everyone come out in Oakville. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful chance to get to meet people and uh, check out some new books. All right. Old friend and author Doug Gardham has been with us, the drive-in and the actor, the original. And, of course, uh, you can find them both, get all the details uh, online. Doug, thanks very much for the time and sharing the stories uh, with us, and good luck. Awesome, Scott. Thanks so much for having me on.